I'm Sam from Jessup Says. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. It's not necessarily about buying less things, it's about buying something that fits its purpose perfectly and ultimately serves you for as long as possible. Now, it should come as no surprise if you know me or if you've seen my Instagram that I love loafers. I love their versatility. Come rain or shine, I know that a pair of loafers will do the job and of course be extremely comfortable doing it. If you're not a loafer person or more likely aren't one yet, then let me tell you why I'm so obsessed. It's comfort and convenience. Loafers can be slipped into and out of at will but at the same time manage to hug your foot and provide ample support and stability for whatever you need to do. Though I am not suggesting that you climb a mountain in a pair of loafers, I'm sure someone out there has. When I was starting to think about my wardrobe and what I needed and what sort of spots and holes and gaps that you know I believe that I have in my wardrobe that I needed to fill out, I really wanted something in dark brown suede with classic ivy looks. So a penny loafer with high sided walls, classic mock toe stitching, all those lovely details. I didn't want anything too European looking, so you know, something nice and round and chunky. So I started to research what options were out there. At this point, I own the absolutely stunning Crockett and Jones Whiskey Shell Cordovan Harvard Loafer, which is on the 376 last. And at the point where I was considering this decision, they were sort of just starting to break in, but I found them to be pretty comfortable. But I wanted to know whether there was anything out there other than Crockett and Jones. Although I do love them and I'd be happy to have another pair, I wanted to know well, what other options are there that fit that same bill. And that's when I started to hear some sort of mystical rumors, some whispers here, some whispers there, about the so-called most comfortable loafer that money can buy. These tales whispered one name, and one name alone, the Alden Leisure Hands up. So I decided that I wanted the Alden Leisure Hanson, this mystical magical loafer that I'd heard so much about. And I'm going to refer to that throughout as the LHS, which is just Leisure Hanson abbreviated. So I reached out to Charles at my favorite local shoe store, which is of course Double Monk. Luckily, they had a pair in my size in Sydney, though they were set aside for Lawrence's mate. Sorry, Lawrence. I was fairly insistent that I wanted them, so Charles was nice enough to get them down to Melbourne, and the next day, and the day before my birthday, they were here and in my hands, and of course on my feet. At the time, these cost me 995 Australian dollars. First quick unboxing before we dive into the details of the loafer and my initial impressions after wearing these for the last two months. So onto the box. It's a fairly standard dark green box with classic gold foil detailing. On the end is of course my size, which is a 7D and the model, which is the 6245F. Or specifically for any shoe nerds out there from the Alden website, this is, an, and it's a mouthful here, the hand-sewn Flexwell penny loafer with the unlined vamp in dark brown suede on the van last with an oak bark leather outsole which I've also seen referred to as the flex leather sole. In the box the shoes come in two plastic bags. There are of course shoe bags which are a nice moleskinny sort of fabric and fairly good quality if you're into that sort of thing and a fairly simple experience overall. But this video is about the loafers not the box so let's get into that. As it's the first time that we've talked about Alden, I wanted to provide a bit of context as to who they are and why I purchased from them. Alden are, in my humble view, the greatest American shoemaker. They're definitely the greatest American shoemaker still around. Charles H. Alden founded the Alden Shoe Company in Middleborough, Massachusetts in 1884. They were among a rapid expansion of footwear manufacturers in the area and produced shoes and boots for men and children until the wars. Post-war, most of the shoe factories still open began to close. But Alden's focus on producing smaller quantities of higher quality shoes kept their doors open, would have thought. They also specialized in orthopedic and medical footwear, meaning that they were well recognized for their comfortable footwear. In 1970, Alden constructed a new factory, and that's where they still produce shoes in America. So they've got the history and the prestige, putting them easily on the level of the big Northampton makers like Edward Green and Crockett and Jones. And with their expertise in orthopedic footwear, it'll come as no surprise when I tell you how comfortable these loafers are later on. So let's talk about that loafer. Specifically, let's discuss the details. 
What does it mean to have a loafer that's a penny loafer with a flex welton sole with a hand sewn mock toe made from an unlined dark brown suede? We've discussed the history of the penny loafer and its rise to glory through the 1950s through Ivy League style and of course my fascination with the style and other videos. But this LHS is much like the Crockett and Jones Harvard, the quintessential Ivy League penny loafer design. I'm going to compare the two head to head in a future video to see which really is the best Ivy League penny loafer. And honestly, I'm interested to see who wins that one. So get subscribed. As for the LHS, the design is extremely classic. The last is nice and round. It's got nice high sided walls. The heel is quite low. So the shoe looks very flat and sort of slipper like. The collar, which is the part that sort of hugs around the foot, is also nice and thick and padded and feels very comfortable against the foot. It's also a bit like a slipper. And finally, onto the penny itself, or the vamp strap, or the saddle, and it's where one may store a penny if they're so inclined. I have this cool 1965 one shilling coin from New Zealand that I was given by my great grandfather. So I hope that sort of imitates what the size of a penny may have been and it fits perfectly. The strap itself or the saddle isn't too wide or too thin. It's a lovely balance of both. The split where you may slide that penny is flat on the bottom side with the arch over the upper part of the foot. All in all, it's a great looking loafer and I often catch my reflection and think how perfectly American Ivy they do look. The other visual aspects of the shoe that adds to the aesthetic and gives it their iconic title, Leisure Hand Sewn or LHS, is the mock toe stitching, which is done by hand. It's a crucial part of the Ivy League style and it's on the same level as the penny strap in terms of how iconic it is. My pair honestly barely look hand sewn. And by that, I mean that they're sewn absolutely perfectly, not a stitch out of place. And you can see that the stitches really are thick and reinforced. The dark brown suede used by Alden is very, very soft and supple. It's stretched beautifully around my feet, but it has an elasticity that allows my foot to feel tight without squeezing it too much. As I mentioned in the Wayman Bespoke finale, the van last, which this loafer is on, I originally found a bit tight across the vamp where the penny strap is, and my foot was a tad wider in the forefoot part. But after a few days of wearing it, the suede has stretched enough for them to be extremely comfortable. The suede is, however, my one nitpick about these loafers. The panels all have a slightly different nap and then they're slightly different between the two pairs. The nap on my left pair is a lot less fine than the nap on my right pair. Fine nap is less fuzzy and a less fine nap is more fuzzy and a higher quality suede is typically defined as having a finer nap so being less fuzzy. It's not a night and day difference between the panels and between each loafer. They're still made from extremely high quality suede. And for my purposes and for the loafer that I want, which are gonna get a lot of wear, I'm not really bothered by it at all. But if you're paying close to a thousand Australian dollars for a loafer, your expectations may differ a little bit from the product that you receive should you purchase from Alden. It's just worth knowing. Finally, let's talk about why people are willing to pay that money for these shoes why I did and why I would again. The comfort, and I don't want to undersell it. These things are extremely comfortable. Possibly the most comfortable loafer that I have personally tried, possibly. This comes down to a few different factors, being the Flex Welton sole being unlined. Now, well, partially unlined. The Flex Welton sole are basically just a thin welt and a slightly thinner sole or an oiled sole so it's nice and soft underfoot. I measured the welt to be approximately one mil thick. That's actually exactly the same as the welt on my Harvard but it is a lot thinner than welts on any other boot or chonky shoe that I own so it is a lot more flexible and therefore more comfortable underfoot for a long period of time because you know the shoe moves more as you move more. The fact that the loafer is unlined or at least partially unlined from the vamp area forward means that there is literally a single piece of leather and the back side of that hide that you'd normally call calf skin and you'd normally have facing out is touching your foot and that's extremely soft extremely supple and very very comfortable against the foot so not only does it conform quickly to your foot also the material that's conforming to your foot is lovely and soft 
The rear section that is lined, so from the saddle loafer strap back, is lined with what looks like vegetable tan leather. It's also lovely and soft, and I presume it's there to provide structure and support to the sides of the shoe. Otherwise, it would literally just become a slipper and have, you know, no shape at all. It is noticeable how soft the shoe looks. And you can see this, and I can demonstrate it by showing you what the shoe looks like when you remove the shoe trees. You can see they instantly become soft. They sort of have a curve to them and they flex a little bit more to be like a foot shape. To sum it all up, I think to me, Double Monk, the shop, and their website put it best. And I quote here, Have you ever put on a shoe and thought, something's wrong, this feels more like a luxurious slipper? If you haven't, then you better try the Alden Penny Loafer. What more can I say? <laughs> So does the Alden LHS live up to the mystical rumors of the most comfortable loafer in the world? Well, I'm not actually sure, but I'm going to say probably. Sadly, I've not tried every single loafer in the world, though I may like to and may want to. For me at least, from the moment I first put them on till today, they are one of the most instantly comfortable shoes that I've ever owned. It's not to say that they're the best fitting shoe, that is of course my Wayman bespoke shoes, but as a loafer, they are exceptionally comfortable. But which one is best? The Crockett & Jones Harvard or the Alden LHS, which is truly the king of the Ivy League loafer. And where should you spend your hard earned money? Find out on the next episode. Thanks very much for watching. Links are in the description as always, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Cheers.